She'd been in our family's lives for 25 years. Melissa became part of our family through my sister, um, getting to know her, her family, and then ultimately investing um, our money with her company. So I'm gonna put this one here. Yep. Bit of everything in the mix here. Yeah. For the past month, Cheryl and Faye have been left wondering what's happened to their life savings since they invested more than $700,000 with Melissa Caddick. The businesswoman disappeared without a trace on November the 12th. You know how much we love you. You just come home, everything's taken care of, you're not in trouble. Her family told police she left her eastern suburbs home at 5.30am in her workout gear not even taking her phone with her. Police are treating the disappearance of an Eastern Sydney mother and businesswoman as suspicious. Had it vanished from her Dover Heights home more than two weeks ago after it was raided by the corporate watchdog and... The corporate watchdog banning the businesswoman from leaving the country, selling assets or sending money offshore. She hasn't been in touch with her family. She hasn't been in touch with her friends. At this stage, we're thinking that something horrible has happened to her. We're not thinking about the money, we're just thinking, this is horrible. Melissa disappeared the day after the corporate watchdog raided her Dover Heights home. In subsequent federal court documents, ASIC outlined a range of allegations, including the misuse of investors' money to make mortgage repayments, buy jewellery and other luxury goods. You can see from the clothes and the jewellery that she was spending money. Big money. Mm. Cheryl and wife Faye believed their investments had grown to almost a million dollars under Melissa Caddick's management. I think that's why we thought we were protected. I know we did, yeah. We get a list of our trades annually in an audit report that has been certified by an auditing company and did have the certificate from an actuarial company in there as well. So as far as we were concerned, all of this stuff protected us. They thought their money was invested with the Commonwealth Bank's share trading arm, Comsec. But when they called to check their account, they were told the account number was fake. She goes, it's a digit short. So all of a sudden you're getting this sinking feeling and it's just getting, sorry, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And you're thinking, this is true. Oh. My money's missing. Everything we've worked for is missing. I mean, we have been planning for this life since I first started working. And then you just go, it's gone. ASIC has identified at least 61 clients who invested with Melissa Caddick. It's unclear exactly how much money her clients gave her, but federal court documents show that between January 2018 and September this year, more than $20 million was withdrawn from Melissa Caddick's direct investment account. Melissa Caddick ran her business from this house in Sydney's eastern suburbs. To operate as a financial planner, you require a financial services licence. In court, ASIC alleges Melissa Caddick never had a licence and was using the licence number of an authorised financial planner without their knowledge. We would encourage uh, anyone uh, in terms of looking at a financial planner to ensure that they are who they are, who they say they are. Um, firstly, that uh, the business that they purport to work for, their financial planning business, actually is licensed and you can check that. Well, uh, the type of uh, individuals that I've experienced in conducting these investigations over 20 years is that they appear to be very confident individuals and uh, initially um, they explain their investments extremely um, articulately and convincingly where they're offering high returns to um, individuals. Barrister and former ASIC investigator Niall Coburn says many financial crimes, such as those alleged in court, are often committed against friends and family. It's a vortex that initially encompasses individuals that they know, family members and friends. And then as they gain in confidence, the fraud grows into a larger form I would not be investing through friends or family. At the end of the day, once you hand over your money, it may not come back. We should have asked to see. 
her insurance. In self-managed superannuation, the members are also the trustees. So Cheryl and Faye aren't covered for losses due to fraud or deception, as they would be if their money was held by a retail or industry fund. When you go into a self-managed fund, even if you're having a financial person manage it on your behalf, you the trustee, you are not covered. Which absolutely is staggering. We have no obligation. Yeah, that's... We sympathise obviously with the families and the investors that have lost out. Many sort of many super fund uh, members and trustees of their own funds may not necessarily fully understand uh, the risks associated with all, all, the, uh, all their rights around uh, sort of many super funds. Cheryl and Faye fear they may now have to sell their home to fund their retirement. Was everything a lie? Was everything on yes. her ends a means to an end? Was there nothing that was genuine? How do you pull off? something like this when there are so many checks and balances in place that are supposed to protect us. And we're a very small fish in this big pond. You know, <laughs> there is banks and there are heaps of other people that are owed money. So, you know, our worst case scenario is that we will get 10 cents in the dollar, if anything. If anything, yeah. I think we've just got to get over the hurt. We've got to get over the shock and we've just got to go on living. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.